This program is dedicated to those that paid for their lives at the hands of the state. Hello and welcome to another edition of Silent Voices, the only program here in America that you, the viewer, can express your opinions and tell your story on the child welfare system. I am Dennis Lawrence and beside me is the lovely Maria Merlin. To start things off this week, we are going to our good friend, Baby LK. This week's episode is the foster kid jumping from home to home. Take it away, Zippy the Hippie. Good evening. Once upon a time there was an evil wizard who was on the verge of preforming his greatest magic trick ever. I am an evil wizard and I am about to preform my greatest magic trick ever. However, I need assistance. It's time for me to get my very own apprentice. So the evil wizard decided to get his very own apprentice. But from where? It wasn't like a parent was just going to hand over their kid to an evil wizard or anything. But then he got a brilliant idea. I have a brilliant idea of where I can get a new apprentice. I'll become a foster parent. So the evil wizard set off to the local Child Protective Services office to see about becoming a foster parent. Hello, I am a Child Protective Worker. Hello, I want to become a foster parent. Okay, you wait here, I'll go get you a foster kid. So the Child Protective Worker went off to get the evil wizard a foster kid. I wonder who that could be. Hello, I am a Child Protective Worker. What do you want, your kid? You are a terrible mother. I'm taking him to a foster home. Please don't take my baby. Too bad. Come along, boy. So the Child Protective Services worker took the boy back to the evil wizard. Here is your new foster kid. Goodbye. Come along, boy. So the evil wizard took the kid back to his lair to start training him to be his new apprentice. Alright, boy. If you are going to be my apprentice, it's time you learn to do some magic. You know, magic. Hello, is there anybody in there? Oh my god, this kid is retarded. He is of no use to me. Come on boy, I'm taking you back. So the evil wizard took the kid back to the child protective worker. This boy is retarded. He is of no use to me. You'll have to take him somewhere else. Goodbye. So what do we do with you now? Meanwhile, once upon a time there was a mad scientist who worked for the drug industry. He was on the verge of his greatest creation. I am on the verge of my greatest creation. I call it the happy pill. Now all I need is a human child test subject to try it out on. But where do I get a kid to try these? So the mad scientist decided it was time to test his new happy pill out on a human test subject. But wherever would he get a kid to try them? Suddenly, he had a brilliant idea. I have a brilliant idea. I know where I can get a kid. I'll become a foster parent. So the mad scientist went down to the local Child Protective Services office to see about becoming a foster parent. Hello, I am a Child Protective Worker. Hello, I want to be a foster parent. Great, I have a foster kid for you right here. Good, come along boy. So the mad scientist took the kid back to his lab to test his new pill. Good. Now I can test my latest invention out on a human test subject. Here boy, take this. So the mad scientist gave the kid a handful of happy pills. There boy, now the final test of my latest invention completely revolves around your answer to the next question. How do you feel boy? I said, how do you feel boy? Hello? 
Oh no. My happy pill fried his brain. I guess I have no more use for him. Come on boys, I'm bringing you back. So the mad scientist took the kid back to the child protective worker. This boy is damaged. I have no further use for him. You'll have to take him somewhere else. Goodbye. So what do we do with you now? Meanwhile, there was a little green alien who was flying around in his UFO, looking for somebody to give an anal probe to. I am a little green alien. I want to give somebody an anal probe, but wherever will I find somebody who I can give an anal probe to? Then the little green alien got a brilliant idea. I had a brilliant idea of where I can get somebody to give an anal probe to. I'll become a foster parent. So the little green alien went to the Child Protective Services office to see about becoming a foster parent. Hello, I'm a child protective worker. Hello, I want to be a foster parent. Great, I had a foster kid for you right here. Come along boy. So the little green alien took the kid back to his UFO to give him an anal probe. Drop your pants boy, I'm going to give you the best anal probe ever. So the little green alien gave the kid the best anal probe he had ever given in his life. This is unbelievable. I just gave that kid the best anal probe I had ever given to anybody, and he didn't even scream once. What kid no the kid doesn't scream when you give them an anal probe? I know, this kid is retarded. He is of no use to me. Come on boy, I'm bringing you back. So the little green alien took the kid back to the child protective worker. This kid doesn't even scream when you give him an anal probe. You'll have to take him back. Goodbye. Meanwhile, once upon a time there was a self-righteous, bleeding heart liberal, pot-smoking hippie chick who was desperate for money. I am a self-righteous, bleeding heart liberal, pot-smoking hippie chick who was desperate for money, but wherever can I get some cash man? So the self-righteous, bleeding heart liberal, pot-smoking hippie chick sat there for hours wondering how to get her hands on some cash. Then suddenly, she got a brilliant idea. I know where I can get some cash, I'll become a foster parent, and earn some good karma at the same time by helping one of those sweet innocent victims of child abuse or neglect. So the self-righteous, bleeding heart liberal, pot-smoking hippie chick went down to the Child Protective Services office to see about becoming a foster parent. Hello, I'm a child protective worker. Hello, I want to become a foster parent. Great, here's a foster kid for you. When do I get paid? Next Tuesday. Cool, goodbye. Come along boy. So the self-righteous, bleeding heart liberal, pot-smoking hippie chick brought the kid home, which is where I just happened to come into the story. They're home at last. Excuse me, can you spare some change? Sorry buddy, I don't get paid till next Tuesday. Thanks anyway. This sort of thing went on until the kid turned 18 and aged out of the foster care system. He went on to join a gang, do drugs, and rob a bank where he murdered the teller. He was then arrested and thrown in jail for the rest of his life. I finally found my forever home. Thank you, Zippy the Hippie. We're going to turn our focus now on to this week's guest. We have had her on here before, Ashley Godfrey. Ashley was supposed to be signing temporary guardianship, but she was conned by court social worker into signing full custody and guardianship papers into relinquishing her children. Once again, another story of no representation by legal counsel we cannot stress this enough. These social workers are not attorneys. Consult with an attorney before signing anything, any paperwork, or allowing anyone into your home. Let's take a look. Hello, and thank you for joining us today for another episode of Silent Voices. Today, we will continue an interview that we started in the last segment with Ashley Godfrey. Um, we thank her for all her insight, and she has been a really valuable asset as far as educating everybody on what is taking place in the family court system. And Ashley, thank you so much for all the research you've done to help everybody um, to understand more what's taking place. We appreciate you being on the show. Thank you. Um, what would you like to clear up most with the courts? Um, that I came to the realization of why you did not receive my threatened miscarriage paperwork. Um, it was actually, um, I don't know if it was my PTSD memory lapses or if it was my stroke disabilities, 
But um, I forgot to change uh, my name with the courts from Ashley Durant to Ashley Godfrey. So the day I lost temporary custody, right here, um, is my threatened miscarriage paperwork. Um, and then I could not attend the um, the day I lost uh, full custody of my daughter because I was a high risk. Um, pregnancy and I was not gonna put my unborn child at risk um. <clears throat> so <clears throat> what did you not get to um, review or to deny to the courts well due to um, my my uh, lawyer not receiving these um, therapy notes until a day prior. I never got to refute th this. Um, I'm not going to expose it all um, because I'm not going to exploit my daughter's trauma like that. Um, but I'm just going to refute some of the things um, she says and underline some of the behaviors that she's dealing with. Um, Heather stated that in her um, response to my parenting time that Shaden has been in therapy for two years. Well, it says that services here started on 4-3-2013. That is a year after mistakenly being taken away from me and a year after um, the school counselor I signed her up for said Shaden will need additional counseling. Um, Heather also stated that I continued to amass open CPS cases. I've had one open CPS case and it was because uh, Shaden had a rock thrown at her at a park and they, uh, the school accused me of not bringing her to the hospital because she didn't get stitches. Um, but we brought hospital documentation. Um, they said the mouth heals really quick so um, they closed the case and no abuse or neglect on my record. The only thing that's on my record is um, adverse reactions um, from medications because I have acquired brain injury and traumatic brain injuries that cause um, side effects and adverse reactions um, that's common in um, acquired brain injury patients. <clears throat> Heather reports that Shaden often acts like Oh, Shaden is uh, very soft-spoken and hesitant to interact with me. She is a very timid yet polite child. Heather reports that Shaden often acts like this when she feels uncomfortable or when her behavior is being corrected. Today she is strugg struggles to complete activities independently and will often copy what I do and attempt to seek my approval. <clears throat> Heather reports that Shaden gets in trouble. She often will shut down or lash out. Um, she has difficulty expressing her feelings and has episodes of irritability with, with no known trigger lasting at days at a time. She has been physically aggressive with her siblings on more than one occasion and is often due to feelings of rejection that they don't want to play with her. Um, <clears throat> she reports that in this letter that uh, that her behavior gets worse after visiting her grandmother or family members connected to Shaden's biological mother. Um, there were no signs of anxiety during the visits. We have plenty of pictures and videos for that. Um, Heather also indicated Willingness to work with Shaden's biological mother regarding visitations. She does remain fearful of inconsistent visits and that they will increase Shaden's anxiety and disrupt her attachment with her. Um, the only inconsistencies we had is she would withhold her over little disagreements and change her schedule at the drop of a work at the drop of a hat for her work and school schedule. Um, there was no fear at my house except for leaving clinging to my leg in fear. So your daughter wasn't actually, didn't have a problem being at your house. They I know, and I have multiple witnesses for that. 
Okay, so that's something that you really feel they blew out of proportion? Um, I think she's uh, projecting. Okay. Um, or just fabricating or exaggerating uh, lies to, to her advantage. Um, now these other ones uh, are updates from, these are dated 2014. Um, it states in here that, uh, that they're working on, uh, improving family relationships. Well, Heather put a stop to this. My family has had no contact with Shaden, um, since September 2013. And I have a note from my grandma, who's a retired CPS worker right here stating that she tried to call Heather on several times and has not family has not seen her since 2013 if you could zoom into that um, and what's consistent throughout here is her her behaviors get worse after visits with biological family <clears throat> Heather reports that when Shaden gets in trouble, she will often shut down and lash out. Um, that's just repetitive. Um, they say uh, Shaden has continued to make inconsistent progress in meeting these goals. Um, she becomes highly disrespectful, avoidant, and distant, and has and has difficulty academically and behavioral in school. Um, Shaden has had more incidences of sharing her feelings inappropriately with her, which um, Heather doesn't know what feelings are, so she wouldn't know what appropriate feelings are. Um, and Heather is a social work worker? No, Heather is uh, the person I placed my daughter with after I was raped to receive help. Okay. And, and I just wanted to state um, at this point in um, addition to what uh, Ashley is speaking of is that, you know, she speaks of her daughter mimicking her and that's a very natural and healthy thing that all of our children do. That is the way they learn is by mimicking others. And we've all seen that in our children and grandchildren, and that's not an unhealthy thing. That's just what children go through. It's a part of the natural growing process and learning for kids. And you might have noticed your child watches a movie a hundred times in a row, and you just want to rip out your hair. Well, this is something that kids do. That's how they learn. Mm -hmm. So is there anything else that you would like to add as far as that goes? Um... Um, Shaden Sales is a nine-year-old, very slight in frame. Shaden rarely speaks, and when she does, she speaks in a very quiet, whispery voice. She is shy, sensitive, and difficult to draw her out. Her social, maturi social maturity seems stunted for the third grade. Um, Shaden, it takes Shaden quite a while to become comfortable and trusting. Um, she has a need to be precise and will look to an adult mentor to gain approval and what she has said or wrote was quote correct um also in these therapy notes um let me see if i can find it and i just would like for the audience to know um, how old is Shaden? Shaden is 10. Okay. Um, she rarely makes eye contact. Um, Heather reports that Shaden acts like this when she feels uncomfortable or when her behavior is being corrected. <clears throat> um... This is consistent with what's in this abuse report from the hospital. Now, I'm not going to go into this. I'm not going to exploit her trauma. I'm just going to state this statement. Patient seems frightened when 
talking about Heather mom. She appears sincere in her disclosure of physical abuse. Patient's mother, Ashley, appears generally concerned for her daughter's welfare. I believe a CPS referral is, re is appropriate and a bruise was noted. Okay, so what exactly caused the trauma that she went through? Um, um, your daughter. The trauma that yeah, she Yeah, did through? you say it was physical abuse? Uh, yeah, physical and, um, and there's more in addition. <clears throat> and was this in the home of the person who is raising her right now, Heather? Mm-hmm. Okay. okay. Do you want to know all of it? Well, if you could just give everybody a general idea of what took place. You don't have to go into details, but just... You know, okay. the fact that there was physical abuse is definitely a cause for concern. Yeah, um, Shaden <clears throat> reported, uh, uh, Heather Mommy, uh, pulls my hair and screams in my face and reports she grabs me by the ribs and shakes me very hard. Um, before this, me and my husband, my husband, sorry, reported physical abuse claims on Heather. This is when we were handed the change of custody forms um, for her shaking her toddler and um, <clears throat> and um, <clears throat> sorry. It's okay, take your time. Mm -hmm. And physical abuse allegations that Shaden was coming out with against Heather as well. And um, Shaden didn't tell CPS the same story because she, quote, Heather mommy scares me to not tell the truth and she puts peppers in my mouth. Heather admitted to me and my husband that she put ha ha jalapeno peppers in her mouth for lying during wow. this time. And, and just wanted to throw in there for those of you who are not aware, it's very common for people who do not want to be found out that they will threaten a child. Um, and the child basically learns through the system that nobody's going to help them. And this child takes that threat very seriously because they have to live with the person. So what they're going through is no longer um, the same as in their mind as telling the truth or a lie. It's it's purely survival mode for these kids because they know that this person that they're with is willing to follow through and harming them and you know uh, for instance my son has learned that nobody's going to do anything about it and you know it, it doesn't matter how many times my ex harms him um, it's not they're not going to get the help they need and they are aware of that yeah, and those therapy notes, by the way, were home-based therapy notes. <clears throat> okay. So Heather was right there. Yeah, and that makes a huge difference, too. And we have counselors who are being paid off, too, that um, the person takes them to the counselor, and they're paying mm -hmm. the counselor in cash, plus they're billing insurance. So they're getting double pay to not tell the truth about the abuse. And unfortunately, mm -hmm. that's really unthinkable but it's happening a lot mm -hmm. um, now I see in my notes here that you have um, parenting styles what is the variance of parenting styles that you've noticed aggressive hostile or authoritarian uh, parenting styles in addition when we had joint custody Heather frequently belittled me in front of Shaden Heather frequently uh, threatened me in front of Shaden. Um, she name called me in front of Shaden. Um, she threatened to take Shaden away from me in front of Shaden. And she threatened to use my PTSD against me. Um, she withheld Shaden with me, from me over disagreements like having an opinion or constructive criticism over little disagreements like wanting to sign Shaden up for school counseling or have her have an IEP or taking her off school grounds for lunch on her birthday. She flipped out when I signed her up for um, school counseling. 
She flipped out when I took Shaden to be evaluated at the hospital without her. It wasn't until I pushed for school counseling that I found out that Heather dropped off old guardianship paperwork to the school. These were sealed court documents. We had joint custody at this time. I was wondering why I was receiving dirty looks from the school, because most parents who, ha who have guardianship have their children forcefully removed. I did not. I was homeless. I gave her up. Okay, and one other thing that I would just... Um, we're running a little bit short on time, and I'm, I, like I said, you've been an amazing source of, of information to everybody who's listening. But I really want to give you a chance, if, if Shaden were watching right now, and if you could say anything to her without fear of retaliation, I'd really like to know what you would say to Shaden, either now or when she's bigger. Nobody left you. Nobody abandoned you. Nobody has rejected you. You are wanted. You are loved. And you are more than your label. And I love you and I miss you so much. And it is not your fault. We can only hope and pray that one day Shaden will in fact be able to hear them words and um, know that it was, you know, that you're trying your hardest. And hopefully that moment is sooner rather than later. Um, <clears throat> is there anything else you would like to say to your precious daughter? Or to the woman who's raising her, to, to anybody for that fact, for that matter? Um, I love you bigger than the sky, deeper than the ocean, more than the moon and the stars at night, infinity and beyond. I love you more. Well, Ashley, thank you so much for coming and sharing your story with us and your information. We really appreciate it for you being on our show today. Thank you. I want to thank you, the viewers, for tuning in this week. You can catch us next week, same time, same channel. Remember, my friends, until next week, your, your voice, voice can, can make, make the, the difference. difference.